Hey everybody, Brent with Mission Spec here. I get asked a lot in personal settings, what's the best way to draw your concealed carry weapon? And of course there's many answers to this question, there's not one way to draw it. And I used to always teach people that the traditional two-handed draw, which is the, the support hand comes across, pulls the fabric up, clears it from the weapon, you get a good purchase from the weapon and you draw your weapon. I used to teach that for many years. So about a year ago, I started practicing the one-handed draw. Just everything done with one hand. Just to see how fast I could do it. And I quickly learned that according to my shot timer, my, I was getting the shot off as fast as with the two-handed draw. I started thinking to myself, there's many benefits of being able to do everything one-handed. In a self-defense situation where you may be required to use your skills to defend your life or someone else's life, it may be advantageous to you to be able to have your support hand free. Either to hold somebody back, to throw a knife coming at your throat, maybe somebody has your arm pinned behind your back, or maybe you've fallen down or you've been pushed down and you're using your left arm to catch yourself, to push yourself back up, whatever. If you have the confidence to draw your weapon with only your weapon hand, that gives you a great advantage out there. The traditional two-handed draw comes usually in one of two ways. It's either to put your support hand on your chest to make sure that you don't interfere uh, with anything. That's usually for an outside the waistband when you're not concealed. Uh, the kind of the traditional two-handed concealed draw is when you use your left hand to grab the shirt, grab the fabric, and to get it out of the way, giving you access to your weapon that's where the fabric's not in the way. So you draw the weapon out, and whether you come up with two hands or one hand and you're canted or not or whatever, that's completely up to the way you train. What I'm proposing is that if you try the one-handed draw every time, 90 to 100 percent of your training, and you come down with your hand, slowly pull up the, obviously not slowly when you're doing it at speed, pull up the fabric, grab the weapon. Sometimes a little bit of shirt may get caught in your grip, but it'll pull free just like that. With a lot of practice, of course all of this takes a lot of practice, don't ever let anybody tell you that it doesn't, you can become very, very quick at drawing with one hand. According to some people, two hands is always going to be faster than one hand. And conventional logic does tell us that, and I always thought that too until my shot timer proved otherwise. And even if you use one hand for all your training, as I'm doing now, you can still uh, u utilize the second hand if it's not needed somewhere else. What I suggest is that when you're training, always start the draw with one hand. Contact the fabric of your shirt first with one hand, then if this hand is free, when you abandon the fabric with your right hand, you can move this hand in just to keep it up there and away from your weapon, if you want. I've found that a lot of times during high stress training, uh, that happens automatically for me. I don't know why it is, maybe it's just my body saying, hey, I've got this free appendage, might as well use it. Again, with the one-handed draw, don't ever put your hand out in front of you when you're practicing because you don't want to get in the habit of putting your hand out in front where you might shoot your hand. Now, in the, in the real world, a shot through the hand is better than a knife to the throat, but I wouldn't practice it that way because you don't want accidents, and accidents do happen. So again, for the one-handed draw, and this is just the way I do it, take your, your weapon hand, sweep the fabric, pull it up, purchase the weapon, and pull it out, all in one smooth movement. It's very important to remember to train like you're going to fight. I see a lot of people on the range who are training with their concealed carry weapon, with their concealed carry holster, but they're not carrying concealed when they're training. They've got their shirt tucked in or they've got it just exposed like this. And of course, you don't walk around like that if you have a concealed carry permit. You got it for a reason. So make sure that you're when you're training for concealed carry, make sure you are concealed. Actually, get the fabric out of the way every single time. You also have individuals who carry a double single action but they practice their draw always from the single action. They don't practice the double action, which is what you're going to have when you actually draw your weapon in real life. Now, of course, if you don't carry around in the tube, when you draw out, this is about the point where you're going to rack your slide. I don't suggest that. I, I feel that everybody should carry around in the tube, but you're going to do what you're going to do. Of course, if you're using a holster that will work with a tucked-in shirt, then the one-handed draw may not be right for you. You'll want to come down, as they say, and crush fabric with a tucked-in shirt and rip it out to gain access to your weapon. 
by no means is this the only way to draw a concealed weapon. There's probably a hundred different ways, maybe a thousand different ways to do this. This is just one of them. It's the one that I've found and it's a lot faster than I thought it was. It's always important to remember that when you're training with your weapon dry, always check and make sure that the firearm is completely safe, that there's no ammo in the magazine. The only reason I have a magazine in this one is it has the pinky extension which is helps with the draw. Uh, so always make sure it's unloaded and always follow the firearms rules of safety. I'm Brent with Mission Spec. Thanks for watching. And remember, practice and practice often. And God bless the United States of America.